This podcast is sponsored by Vicon, the Academy Award-winning developer of motion capture products and services for the life science, entertainment, and engineering industries. Shogun, Vicon's visual effects software, developed specifically for the needs of the VFX community, captures performances effortlessly, in real time, and delivers robust, accurate, reliable data. The latest release of Shogun now includes full range of motion, high-fidelity finger capture, along with other massive quality-of-life improvements, so you can capture reality faster. Find out more at www.vicon.com. Oh, hello, Internet. This is Troy Baker, and I'm here with your lovely, very, very British host, Victoria Atkin. And this is the Performance Capture Podcast. The fact that I get to bridge this weird world between performer and, but like, fangirl first, let's be real, is so dope. I kind of created my position. Like, nobody said, oh, you know, here, go to school to become a performance capture producer. I pretty much created my own career. If there's something that, that you're curious about or if you have any questions, like, go out and find the answers for yourself. What I think I love the best about it is just its family environment. You know, the dots can tell if you're lying. Hi, my name is Victoria Atkin, and you're listening to the Performance Capture Podcast. Today, we have an extraordinary pro on the show. He is very infamous. He runs an incredible Facebook group. I'm sure everybody listening to this already knows who I'm about to say, or he's going to say himself. Can you please tell us your name and where you grew up? I'm Damien Gordon, and I grew up in Vancouver, Canada. Canadian. There we no, go. I'm American. But you grew up there. Yes. I, w- I lived there from the time I was about five till about 25. Oh, okay, great. So I'm a man between nations. Okay. I feel and you have Canadian. two passports? No, I was never fully Canadian. I'm oh. only fully American. Oh, there we go. I just went backpacking across Europe and didn't admit it for a while. Okay. <laughs> like, like, that. like most Americans. <laughs> That's cool. And can you tell us your professional title, please, Damien? I am the virtual production supervisor at DreamWorks Animation. Wow. And you have had a number of different jobs over the years doing motion capture. Can you tell us a few of your credits and things that you've worked on? Because they are very, very exciting. Sure. I started at Electronic Arts Canada doing video games. I've done, I don't even know how many video games, many, many, many video games for them and others. I went to television after that. I did a couple seasons of a show called Heavy Gear for Rainmaker in Vancouver, and I've done a couple... Barbie movies, and then I went to film and television, did the Matrix sequels, um, Polar Express, Monster House, Beowulf, I Am Legend. Just a few small titles there. (sighs) A few small ones, yeah. yeah. I've been around for a while. I'm a lot older than I look. Well, we're going to talk about the motion capture and performance capture and its growth and the history of it, because I feel as though you can talk about this because you've been in the industry for a while now. Um, So with your professional title, What does that entail? What do you do on a day-to-day basis over at DreamWorks? Um, We do kind of a grab bag of motion capture things. So we do anything from layout uh, captures to set scouting to character studies to marketing uh, material to uh, VR and AR games to theme park rides. So we kind of cover the, the gamut of the possibilities with this technology. The only thing we're not making actively is video games, but we're making game engines that we use for experiences. Just wow. You don't play them except to watch characters do things. And I'm very excited to ask you the next two questions. I, I'm, I'm so excited about this. I would like you, and we ask every single guest, but I'm particularly excited about how you're going to describe this, how you would best describe what performance capture is. Performance capture is the future of film. Oh, I like it. 25 years ago, when I got into this industry, I had been at Electronic Arts for about a month in that capacity. And I saw a show about the invention of the film industry, and it was talking about how Thomas Edison had made the film camera. And they said, well, in the start of the film industry, the camera was really big and it couldn't move and you couldn't shoot for very long. And it was kind of low res. And it was black and white. And you had to dress up in special costumes and shine special lights on the actors. And they had a very small area they could perform within because the camera couldn't move. And they mostly use it to record, like, specialty acts, like someone uh, doing their signature batting move or juggling or something that, you know, you'd put a nickel in and you'd watch these little things. 
And I saw that, and the way my brain works is I, I can make abstract connections between things that don't seem connected. So I saw that, and I, I, I percolated for about a minute. And I, I thought about the list of things that made the film industry, w with the film camera, what it was and what the industry was then. And I was like, okay, it's low resolution. Uh, can't shoot for very long. Got it. Black and white. And I went through the list, and I'm like, this is the list that describes motion capture. It's the same list. So if mocap is film 100 years ago, then one day mocap and film will be the same thing. You just can't tell right now because it's so crude. I was like, hmm, how do I go about making that a reality? I, I don't know, but I'm going to start telling everybody that this is a thing and I'm, I'm going to be there when it happens and I'm going to push people in that direction and I'm going to just, this is going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I've seen the future. So I just have to head in that direction. And we have already seen that begin to happen. Alita, Battle Angel, those, I mean, motion capture is being used more and more in film every day. Yeah. So, I mean, so you're basically a psychic. I had an epiphany is what somebody said to me one time and I was like, okay. And I just, I just, I just realized that they were the same thing. And so you can apply all the same techniques to that. And I had come from a film background. So I'd, I'd been a set decorator and I'd worked on film sets. So I just started applying a film methodology to what was seen as a computer technique. And I just kept telling everybody, I'm going to change Hollywood. I'm going to make movies with this thing. And people just thought I was insane for years and would mock me and whatever. And f now everybody just takes it as something that's just, a, well, of course. So it's nice to see it come. I wasn't crazy. And this is exciting for me to ask. How did you discover performance capture? Because you're saying earlier, you said about 25 years ago, you've been doing this. How did you get into it? Your first gig, what happened? Um, well, I had worked in the film industry and uh, got this job at Electronic Arts testing video games. Okay. And just busted my ass and tried to, you know, figure out where I was going to make my mark at that company. And they had just gotten a mocap system and the guy who was running it was leaving. And so they like, you know, internally cast around for who could take over. And I showed up and I'm like, hi. I'm like, oh yeah, we heard you're coming. So and they gave me the job. And then the only instructions I got were go get good. Oh, wow. And so, and so you didn't know how to use that system at all. You just taught yourself. Yeah, the guy who I was replacing was leaving to go on a skiing trip in 20 minutes. So, no way. <laughs> so I showed up, and he got a weird look on his face, and he went, Oh, uh, I got to go. Um, you press this button, and then it makes data. And then he, like, left, and I was left on my own. And so luckily it was over Christmas break. How would you go about researching how to do that? I mean, there wasn't any internet or anyone no. to ask. So I just camped out on the floor of the stage, and I didn't go home until I figured it out. So I was there for about a month and a half, <laughs> just eating pizza and sleeping in my chair. Did you put a mocap suit on and try and test it yourself, or did you get somebody to help you with no, that? No, we'd actually, like, done a shoot. Oh, so they they had shown up for this baseball game and done a shoot, and I didn't know anything about aiming cameras or anything about anything. They thought I was just going to, like, pull out the cameras. And they didn't know anything about motion capture either. They thought I was just going to pull out the cameras, plug them in, go wait by the side until the experts were done, and then I would unplug the cameras and sweep the stage like I was, like, a grip or something. <laughs> so the film, I mean, the the video game team shows up. They don't know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. We're all kind of not knowing what we're doing together. And then they left and expected me to deliver it. So I was just sort of like, what have I gotten myself into? Um, and I just sat there and banged my head against the screen until, like, I don't know if you've ever seen unlabeled motion capture. The You know, when you label it, you, you tell the software what each point is. And once you've done that to a couple points, they'll connect themselves with a the little stick and they'll start to look like a person. Well, this was like a cat's cradle. Okay. Every stick was connected to every marker and nothing looked like a human. And it was just like a mess of colors. Oh, wow. It looked like a briar patch. Or, there was no human involved. And I was just like, I didn't know what I was going to do. And you couldn't actually do anything because it was built by engineers for medical technology. It wasn't a film thing. It was a medical thing. And this was way, way back in the day. So there's like no software at all. And everything was just a graph. So you're just looking at numbers on a graph, and you're like, uh. 
So one day I just got really frustrated and I turned off all the sticks and I saw a person standing there and I was like, oh, I see, I see, I see the, the person. And uh, I figured out, I, I called the company that made the hardware and I was like, okay, when I do this, it does that. Why is it doing it? And they explained to me some of the things, how it was working. And I was like, okay, I've come up with this new approach and I want you to change your software. And I like got on a plane and flew to the company and I said, this is what I'm doing. Do you understand? And they were like, uh, no. And I said, well, just please make it work like this. And so that's now how you kind of label yeah. things is how that I figured out in that camping out with pizza in a, in a Cave. So not only have you been in this profession and you've been extremely successful with these big titles, but you actually have been a pioneer of changing how we see the data. Wow. that's that. I feel very, very privileged to be sitting here right now with you. That's extremely exciting. I'm sure everybody listening is, is very <laughs> excited by that story. Um, what is your favorite thing about this? Why do you love getting up and doing this? I like making content that other people consume. I don't know. It's, you know, being an artist, sort of. And motion capture is an artistic thing, even though it's like a technically skilled thing that might not look like art all the time. So I like I like the puzzle of it. I like the unknown. I definitely like solving problems that are new and interesting. So I'm usually breaking some sort of ground on something somewhere, or pushing people to invent new things. I like being a pivotal part of this thing. I mean, how often do you get to sort of see the birth of a new technology, recognize that birth, be there at the birth, and then like kind of like guide it through to adulthood and then, you know, wave at it as it goes off to college. So that's kind of how I feel. I'm like this proud parent. I don't know how I got to be this involved you know, I'm the, the idiot savant of mocap, I guess. I just was in the right place at the right time, had the right epiphany. Um, I just, it's just fun. I like filmmaking. I like the whole process of it. And uh, can you tell us, sometimes we, we ask people to tell us a specific experience that you've enjoyed on the motion capture stage, maybe something funny that happened or, I don't know, I'm sure you've got hundreds of stories, but if you could pick one that stands out for you today. I just had a great feeling when I was in the rigging on Matrix. We had to get there so early in the morning, and then we were climbing around in the box dress, and right next door, the stunt team was, like, cranking Rage Against the Machine, and they were just pounding the tunes, and the tunes are really great, and I was doing this amazing thing on this amazing movie, and I just sort of felt like if I fell from the truss and died right there on the stage floor, that I would go out happy. Yeah. And so th I just remember that feeling. That's one of them. Then the other one would be watching John Heater break his foot on Monster House. It was not special, but oh. definitely unique. Tell us what happened. <laughs> I mean, other than him breaking his foot, how did that? Uh, it was his first shot in the movie. So oh, he's no. he played the pizza guy, the, the Ron Jeremy looking pizza guy. So he's supposed to like talk to the kids and then uh, run out of the pizzeria, and and he ran out of the pizzeria, and Bob Zemeckis said, you know, go around for another take, and you just sort of run around the volume and come back in. And he ran around a camera guy and stepped on one of the cables, and it rolled his foot sideways, and we all heard, like, this loud pop sound. And and it was all caught on mocap. <laughs> so I had mocap of him breaking his foot. So uh, he, he hobbled back into the volume, and he was, like, staring at his foot, and I'm like, t pose t pose <laughs> And they're looking at me. I'm like, T pose so we can use the data. And he's like, well, okay. And T poses. The campaign. And then we we rendered it for him, like all slow mo with sparks coming out. And, but he was gone for about six weeks. He was a very good guy, very good sport about it. But Robert Zemeckis seems to have done a lot of performance capture now. Yes, he, he seems to be a really great perform. I mean, he's an incredible director nonstop. But he seems to have worked in the performance capture medium. You've worked with him at Polar Ex Express is Polar Express. Uh, he was involved in Monster House as a producer, so he was around uh, Beowulf. Yeah, uh, he's a great guy. I love Bob. Yeah, and how? I mean, you've seen, you've seen him on the performance capture stage and and things like that. You've worked in film and TV as well. How do you? I mean, when you when you see these directors working, what what differences do you see? Um, I'm, most of them take to it pretty well. I mean, the, you know, when it's done right, mocap is film, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's not about um, freaking them out with this new technology. It's trying to make them comfortable with a process they already are really comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are pretty uh, take to it pretty well. The the biggest I think hurdle for most directors is the the speed at which it moves. Motion capture doesn't have lights to change unless you're doing virtual production, and then now it does. But in the old days when you, were, you weren't caring about as much post while you were shooting it, 
There's no, you know, film to change. There's no lights to switch. So you get pages and pages of material that can be daunting for actors, that can be daunting for directors. It's just hard to prep that much. You know, you don't have time to go back to your trailer in between lighting setups and figure out what the next shot is. It's just bang, 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 bang. So some directors take to that better than others. Um, Bob never seemed to have a problem. I mean, we were just at a, like a, they kept calling it a black box theater. Yeah. So it's was, it was really just him and Tom Hanks doing their thing, you know, and we just sort of fly, you know, flies on the wall. Yeah, that sure must have been a fun experience to, to be a part of. What advice, I mean, I feel you are a treasure trove of advice for people wanting to get into motion capture, specifically perhaps what you're doing and how, you know, if how would they, where do they begin? Where do, do they study specific things? I know we talked to another guest on here called Katie Lydon, who's um, working over at Pinewood Studios in the UK, and she actually studied um, computer, you know, sciences and things at, at university. And these courses are now becoming available. What advice would you give to people that want to get into performance capture that are just starting out? I mean, that's that's probably one of the best routes now. Is you you can just go and get schooling. Uh, Full Sail has a motion capture-related uh, course of study. I think there's other schools that offer specific ones. Usually anybody who's offering like a computer graphics degree is probably going to have some sort of component of motion capture. Um, but those are going to be, you know, academic classes. So you're going to get uh, not exactly, you know, thrown in the deep end of production. So You don't need <clears> to get pizza and sit on the floor and figure out the puzzle. Yeah, and get strapped to a chair for a month and a half. Yeah, <laughs> nothing, none of that comes with the school. I mean, the schools do do a little bit of that. But um, you can, once you've had a little bit of schooling, um, most mocap service providers are looking for people to come in and work. They're looking for people with credits. Um, so you could go and intern at a studio. You could go and get a job at a, a, a show. A lot of the bigger um, movies are, are waiting for people to come out of school. So, you know, avatars are right there waiting for you. Okay. They, they need people. And, and any of the big movies, now especially that it's taking off, um, there's a big demand for talented crew. And if if they, you know, don't have the uh, finance or things to go to school, if they want to get into this, is there specific routes? I mean, LinkedIn or resumes, or is it just reaching out to people? I mean, but let's also talk about your amazing Facebook group that we have. It's called the Motion Capture Society. And if people aren't following this and have found this podcast, please, please, please follow and go like that page that Damien runs. It's a great resource. I'm I'm so thrilled. It gives me tidbits of performance capture news and different things that are going on. And also there's opportunities that get posted on there too, right? Yeah, if if I can, I try and um, hook people up with as much work as possible. Uh, there is a constant link on that page that, that says, let's all work in visual effects. And it refreshes, I think, every hour. So if you're looking for work in visual effects, you can stop by the Motion Capture Society and check that link out. Um, you can also join the virtual production group, which oh. is another page I run, on both LinkedIn and Facebook. Sometimes people try the volunteer route, and a lot of studios will will definitely consider you if you, you know, I have heard stories like people showing up and pounding on the door and, you know, getting hired that way. So it does work. Um, but, it, you know, you have to have some, some skills, some sort of background. So usually it helps if you have a, a resume of some sort. You're coming in as, you know, computer science major, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is. If you have game engine experience, the, you, you can find a job just about anywhere these days. But programming, anything like that, animation, uh, most, most studios will at least give you the time of day if you have previous credits of some sort. And just going right back to the beginning, you said you were a games tester. That's how you started out, right? So you're a big video game person. You still into that now, or? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually had a thing where my mother wondered how I, uh, you know, she's like, "How are you doing all this?" And, and I'm like, "Well, I've been practicing for years. I've been reading science fiction, and I've been playing video games." And she was like, "I thought you were just goofing around." I'm like, "No, no, that was work study." <laughs> yeah, that's... you know, and I still apply that. Like, video games today, uh, you want to see what everybody's doing. You want to see the mechanics that they're involving, especially when you're making your own content. You want to see, oh, I love how that picking up mechanic worked. Let's try that. So, it's still research. Yeah, it's air, cool. air quotes research, but I. I 
take it seriously. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think you should. So we have some gifts for you today from our sponsor, Vicon. Some uh, sunglasses. Sweet. I um, definitely think they're going to look good with you. Oh, yeah. And a nice notepad. Okay. You can write all your things in. And their magazine for the year. Sweet. There we are. So Excellent. some more research for you Pushing and boundaries. things to do. I am so thrilled that you came on the show today and I'm so thankful for your time and your just generosity of advice that you give us all on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. I'm going to check that out because I haven't followed that yet. Um, but thank you and thank you for your contribution to this industry because it's, it's really amazing to see and hear about the history of performance capture and... I'm just excited for the future, as I guess you are too. Well, I'm uh, I'm a I'm a fanboy, so as much as I can help everybody, I, I want to. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for and, having me. Um, yeah, and can we find you? I mean, you mainly just run those pages. Is there any other social media links that you want to shout out? I have a terrible web page called MrMocap.com. It's M-I-S-T-E-R Mocap.com because someone else had M-R Mocap, which is the one I wanted. But anyway, you can kind of get a hold of me through there. I'm mostly on Facebook. I never leave Facebook. So okay. if you need me, uh, Motion Capture Society on Facebook. Okay, thank you so much. And thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. I can't believe 20 minutes has flown by. This recording was done by Formosa Interactive a full-service post-production sound company. Among its many divisions, Formosa Group as a whole offers independent and AAA content creators end-to-end -end services, including voiceover, sound supervision, sound design, editorial, mixing and music for gaming, film, broadcast, and other platforms. Visit www.formosagroup.com for more information. Thank you to Soundbox LA for editing this episode.